Hello, welcome to today's tutorial, I'm Mr. David Okote. And today we are going to look at design of a timber floor joist. The question read, a timber floor is to be supported by 50 by 50 millimeter joist spaced at 600 millimeter center to center each of 3.2 meter effective length. We are required to use the data provided to check the adequacy of the joist against bending, deflection, and shear. Among the data given is floor boarding, that's a load of 0 0.34 kiloton per square meter, sailing 0 0.15, imposed load 0 0.7, and for the joist weight, we have to use the tables to calculate. Load duration, we've been told is medium duration, any modification factor K8 been given as 1.1. This is how we shall proceed. Now we come here and we say design loading, flow boarding we've been given, sailing, then imposed load. How do we calculate joist weight? First of all, you have to select, I selected strength class SC3 of the timber. And this SC3, it has the properties that we look at, but one of the property I want to use here is the density. It has a density of 540 kilogram per cubic meter. For me to compute the joist weight, I will take the cross section area of the joist. They were 50 by 50 millimeter. I multiply by the density of the timber, and then I multiply by the gravity divided by the center to center distance, which is 50 by 50 times 10 power negative six is convert from millimeter squared to meter squared. I multiply by 520 kilogram per cubic meter, which is density times gravity 9.81, over 0 0.6. Multiplying by 10 power negative 3 will convert kilo, will convert newton per square meter to kilo newton per square meter. Now from there, I will add the total of them. The all of them will add up to 1.212 kilo newton per square meter. Now this second step, I will calculate the uniformly distributed load per each joist. So this load W is given by joist spacing multiplied by effective span multiplied by the total load. Joist spacing 0 0.6, 3.2 times 1.212, we get a value of 2.33 kilo Newton. From there, we go to grade stresses and modulus of elasticity. Remember, we took our grade strength class as SC3. Let us proceed and obtain the bending parallel to grain, shear parallel to grain, and modulus of elasticity, E mean, which means E average from the table. Now we shall move along SC3. Let's proceed. We come to our table comfortably. Our SC3 is the third section in the strength class column. Move along it, bend it to grain, it has 5.3 newton per millimeter squared. Then move up to shear parallel to grain is 0 0.67 newton per millimeter squared. Modulus of elasticity, that is capital E. Now we look at the column of mean average, not mean uh, for the lowest. We look for the mean average, it has 8,800 newton per millimeter square. And the density we had used, as I told you, the last column is approximate density kilogram per cubic meter. That is the, where I use the 540 I took from this particular table. Then from there, we go to modification factors. Modification factor number one is duration of loading. We have been told it is medium. If it is medium, if you come to this table here, this table seven, you find if it is medium, the factor, modification factor is 1.25. This is what we have here. 
1.25. Load sharing system K8, we, are, we were given in the question as 1.1. And then depth factor here is normally calculated or read from the table. Let me show you the depth factor, which is K7. Now, this is here. Now, the minimum depth here is 72, and then it ends with 300. This is the formula. But now, remember, our section is 50 by 50, meaning it is less than 72. Now, from the BS code on timber design, we were told if the section is below 72 millimeter, you take depth factor K7 as 1.17. So, we are going to use a K7 of 1.17. Let us proceed to bending. Now let's do the bending checks. Now the bending moment M will be equivalent to WL over H, where W was the weight per joist, which is 2.33 times 3.2 over 8. This will give us 0 0.932 kilonewton meter. This is the bending moment from the imposed loads, from applied load. Then you go to permissible bending moment. Permissible means what the section can carry comfortably. So permissible bending moment is normally given by the bending moment we read from the table, multiplied by factor K3, multiplied by factor K7, and multiplied by factor K8. This will give us 8.5 three Newton per millimeter squared. Then we go to moment of resistance, MR. MR, it means the value the section is resisting the applied moment, the extent. So that when you, you take the permissible bending moment, you multiply by the section modulus along XX, which is ZXX. In our case here, this ZXX is normally read from the table, but for our case here, we didn't have the table attached. We can also calculate it by taking BD squared over six. If we substitute 50 times 50 squared over six, you get 20,833 millimeter cubed. Now our moment of resistance will be equivalent to permissible bending multiplied by the section modulus, which will give us, we multiply by 10 power negative 6 is to convert Newton to kilonewton and millimeter to meter. We get it is 0 0.18 kilonewton meter. This imply the section can resist up to 0 0.18 kilonewton per meter, and we are subjecting it to 0 0.932 kilonewton meter, meaning the section will fail. Now we can conclude and say, since the moment of resistance is below the applied moment, the section is inadequate for bending. Let's look for the deflection check. We say permissible deflection is given by 0 0.003 multiplied by the effective span, which is 0 0.003 times our effective span of 3.2 meter, which is 3,200 millimeter. It gives us 9.6 millimeter. And again, total deflection is normally given as the sum of bending and shear deflection. Bending deflection, given our loading condition, we use the formula 5WL cubed over 384 E mean IXX, that is the second area moment along XX, plus 12WL divided by 5 E mean times area of the section. Now, the area of the section can be obtained by taking BD, which is 50 by 50, 2,500 millimeter squared. And second area moment along XX, IXX is obtained by BD cubed over 12, which is 50 by 50 cubed over 12, giving us 520,833 millimeter power four. Hence now, if we substitute, we can now, Obtain now the, the where we have the factor like 10 power 3 and 2.33 is to convert from kilonewton to newtons. And also we have converted meter to millimeter and all kilonewtons to newton. Now this will give us a total deflection of 217.17, but permissible is 9.6. Now because 
the total deflection is more than permissible, we say the section is not adequate. The section is inadequate in terms of deflection. So deflection test has failed. Now we go to the last check, which is shear. We say permissible shear stress. Shear stress that can be allowed before the section fail is given by the shear stress we read from the table multiplied by K3 and K8, which will give us 0 0.92 Newton a millimeter squared. Now, maximum shear force, Fv, is given by the W, the load we had divided by two, which is 2.33 over two, giving us 1.165 kilo Newton. Maximum shear force at the neutral axis is normally given by three over two, maximum shear force divided by area, which is equivalent to that. Now we, we convert maximum shear force from kilonewton to newton by multiplying by 10 power three, you find it is 0 0.699 Newton per millimeter squared. Now it means the applied is less than the permissible. In this regard, it means our section is able to withstand applied shear force. Therefore, Joyce is adequate in shear. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. You can share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Any question you can put in the comments, I will be glad to help you out. Goodbye, see you again.